Mr. Tommy. Let me, Dr. Dan Diaco, a board certified plastic. Hey everybody, what's going on? It's me, John D. Valero, getting ready for the show here. I uh, forgot my headphones this week, so I'm gonna have I'm flying a little bit blind here, but we're gonna we're gonna make it work, figure it out. We're gonna have special guests, and Paul's gonna join us. Hey everybody, what's going on? It's me, John D. Valero, on the News Talk 1040 uh, radio station here. It's John D. Valero radio show here on, 10, on News Talk 1040, all over the greater Tampa Bay area, and live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and X. Hey, beautiful, beautiful Monday here, huh? We've got some great weather here in the Tampa Bay area. It is Monday, March the 11th. Some of you may be on spring break. I know my kiddo is on spring break. And listen, but we're not getting a break from the action. We're not getting a break from the politics. We're not getting a break from Joe Biden and the State of the Union. What was that? I mean, I, I don't know what it is. We either get like kind of sleepy Joe or we get like, you know, the screaming Joe. It's either sleepy or he's screaming. It's both of them. Like, we just never know what he's going to do. So it, it's it's really, really crazy. We have so many different things to talk about today. I have Paul at Villarreal here by phone. He's going to be talking to us in, in a second. I mean, President Biden, could not, you have Marjorie Taylor Greene, Congresswoman Greene there from Georgia, was talking about this shocking, tragic case of Locke and Riley in Georgia. And she had the shirt on saying, say her name. And she was saying the State of the Union. And President Biden said, Lincoln, Riley. Now, listen, I know people can make mistakes, whatever. But then he also was talking about, he talked about illegal immigration. And then later in an interview with Jonathan Capehart, took that back. Like, oh, I misspoke, undocumented, whatever. We've got stuff going on in New York City and, and uh, Governor Hochul. There's so many things that are happening out, out there. We have a new RNC chair. We have a new RNC chair and a Trump family member is now co-chair. Uh, Laura Trump is co-chair of the RNC. Uh, you have uh, Ronna Romney McDaniel is, is out. She's out. And now Nikki Haley has dropped out. But then that was a kind of a weird situation there. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the economy. We're going to talk about Elon Musk. We're going to talk about, uh, we're probably going to talk about, quite frankly, Tucker Carlson sitting down with Alex Jones and some of those kind of comments right there. We do have to talk about, um, we do definitely have to talk about the fact that this show is sponsored by the Doherty Auto Group, Automotive Group. And I'm sitting right here in a beautiful dealership of Maserati now for mail of Sarasota. And it's really, really awesome. And the general manager, Tim Reher here, we've got great customers here. We may have a customer coming on here in a second to talk about it. If you wanna see some of the coolest cars right here, you can come on down to 7641 South Tamiami Trail. I've got a customer coming in here right now. I've got a customer coming in here right now. And th these guys are politically active and stuff like that. We've got, we, we know what's going on. They're getting some snacks. We've got Joe Mesco right here joining us. Come on in here. Come on in here. It's beautiful whites right off there to come the on, side. Martina. And she coming in. Oh my gosh. Hey. Why wasn't your, she was a little bit camera. She was a little bit camera shy. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Do you folks now you are from, you're an entrepreneur and this is why it's yes. very relevant. This is what I, this is so relevant to what we're talking about right now. We're talking about state of union. We're talking about lock and Riley. We're talking about the, the border issue, everything like that. You ran a number of pizza shops up there in New York for a long time. Yes. Now you've, you bought a Maserai. We'll go, we'll get into that. Yes. But I want to talk about what it's like to be in New York, be a business owner in New York, why you moved to Florida, and just your view of what's happening right now to New York. Well, I love New York. Yeah, of course. I was born there, born and raised, uh, but I lived upstate, which is the climate's a little bit different than downstate. It's a little more conservative, so that it fit me. I couldn't live downstate or in the city. Too much. It was too much. Too many too tax too much, too much government, too much everything, too much control. Has it gotten worse over the years? I'm assuming it has. I haven't been to New York in a long time. Uh-huh. But upstate New York, like I said, is a completely different beast. Yes. You feel more like you're in a conservative state, not like... It's uh, almost like a tale of two states. It is. Okay. What do you make of, of, of Governor Hochul right now? It's terrible. <laughs> I lived there when like, Cuomo was governor. Right, right. Yeah. He now was, you've got the brother. And uh, the mayor of New York was uh, Rudy. 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 Rudy G. My boy. Oh, come on now. 
Now you're down here. Now the the you're seeing what's happening. Yes. A lot of these states were like, oh, you know, let them in. Oh, you know, the, the, the these governors of Texas and Florida, you know, the, they're so bad and, and they're so against people and they're haters and stuff like that. And now you've got a situation where Ron DeSantis, Governor DeSantis, Ronnie D, and Governor Abbott from Texas, mm -hmm. they oh, they, they, they had okay, enough of that. They, they, yeah, yeah, Governor Governor DeSantis. Put some people in Martha's Vineyard, and they flipped out <laughs> right. <laughs> right. real quick. Right. And now they got the buses rolling there, and they're putting some people in in New York City, and they can't handle. Wait a minute, you're the biggest city in the USA, and you're telling me you can't handle. What what happened now? The biggest problem for me is they they're soft on crime. They don't. They, and, they and, are. And the the border, soft on border, soft on crime. But they're going after Trump nonstop. That's because no, he's not he's not soft on the border. See, <laughs> she wants. She wants. Come on, over. Want get over here. Come guy. on over here. Trump is, Trump is the one. That's we've, got, we've got. We've got. We've got Mrs. Mesco over Trump here. Come 2024, on. 2024, baby. Come on. We got Mrs. Mesco. Um, this Trump is a party. We're we're having a party down here. Yeah, yeah. We're having a party down here yeah. at yeah. Alfred Mayo Maserati upstairs. So that's it. That's it. We need up. We need up. We, we, we need up our snack game a little bit. But we're gonna do that. But it, now, what's it like being in Florida? What, what's that atmosphere like? You probably talked to some family, friends, people that are back there. Just, just that contrast. It's totally open. It's like what we went through with COVID. The other states were all locked down. Yep. They couldn't do well, anything. I was from Michigan. I'm born and raised in Michigan. Yeah. I haven't she knows lived there too. in a while, but I know what's going on because I have family there who have businesses there. Who they were telling them what to do. Clothes. You can't do this. You can't do that. You, right? Masks. So, masks in Michigan. Masks. All of it. And Michigan, never you've stopped. got Governor Whitmer oh, over there. Oh, my gosh. And and they were to float in her as maybe possible VP. Maybe she's going to run if no Biden way. drops out. Like, I just don't understand Please, that. No. You had you had the boat incident. You've had all kinds of problems oh, yeah. going on. Like, and there's union members now that are like, hey, wait a minute. This Democratic Party is maybe not working with us, working for us. And in fact, Biden's got a problem with uncommitted right. over there in well, Michigan as well. Big tell time. me, tell me, okay, because Michigan is going to be a battleground state. I think Michigan and Pennsylvania are going to be the two big states. Maybe Georgia, but I think Georgia is coming a little bit more out of play. Maybe with this, with this engine, we'll talk about that. What's it like in Michigan? What What are the politics like in Michigan? Well, it's the home of the. There's a lot of uh, the Arab people live there. There's a lot of Dearborn, in Dearborn, Dearborn. Yes. automotives there, there, unions the there. Union is anti-Trump. You know, the UAW, anti-Trump. They don't like Trump. But I think it's kind of like what you were talking about with, with New York, which is, okay, you have maybe the cities are liberal, but when you get out into yes. the country, it's different. Well, there's no doubt it's about way it. way different. I, I'll, I'll, Go I'll ahead. insert this real quick. During the 2016 cycle, Trump's first run, Yeah. I was in Michigan at the time. I was taking care of my dad, so I was back and forth. But during the months leading up to the election, when everybody's putting their yard signs out, everybody's, you know... Showing who they're supporting. I would I would drive around going to a doctor's appointment, taking my dad somewhere, going here, going there, and I would do I would have my own my own little election in yeah. my head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just right? talking because to people, sit taking a temperature. I, know, I mean and I and I, I would look at yard signs and I would count them. And that was the way I would, in my mind, thought to myself, Okay, this is what I'm That's your own poll, that's your that survey. My own yeah. survey. What do you own, see? Come down here in Florida. You got a Trump. There's a lot of Trumps down here. No, it did, and it didn't. But it didn't matter where I was. Trump, I'd see 67 signs. Yeah. Dang. 21 signs. And we Trump. have people from um, Michigan down here in Florida. Now. Absolutely. Snowbirds. A lot of people. Snowbirds. Snowbirds. And they have the Trump flag. Our neighbors have Trump flags, and they're from Michigan. On the west coast of Florida, it does seem like we have more of the Midwesterners yes. that come down here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now, why, talk to me about this. It came down to Haley versus Trump. Why do you two like Trump? Well, listen. <laughs> Let's go. I, have... I've liked him, and I didn't know a whole lot about him until he made his little trip down the, the escalator. I, I mean, I knew who he was. I obviously knew who he was. Sure. Watch his show. Worldwide celebrity, apprentice, everything like and that. And I said to my father... As soon as I, that happened, I walked into the, the great room where he was sitting and I said, that man will be the next president of wow. the United States of America. And I'll tell you why. Why? Because he's not a politician. And I know that everybody says that. And I'm not the only person to say that. And if you talk to people, people say it everywhere. But it's just the truth. 
It's the truth. So what you're saying right now is super important. And that goes to this larger issue, which is how bad do you think it is right now? How important is this election right now? It's the most important election of our lifetime. Wow. Period. End of story. Wow. The most important election of our lifetime. I, this, right now, we are in a war between good and evil. Political, political, political. That, that's, that's my take on it. Good and evil. We've reached a complete 100% crossroads right now if it doesn't cat williams was talking about that on club shay shay that cat williams is saying hollywood is is no doubt there's a lot of problems in hollywood there's no doubt and if it doesn't happen this time epstein island yeah oh my god if it doesn't happen this time i believe that there's a possibility that we may never see another. it's game over we may never see another republican in office that's how important it is that's incredible do you do you agree with that joe one hundred percent. Yes. Dang. 100%. Yeah. Yes. And Not I know just the way I feel about it. Feel so I, my heart kind of fell out of my body in two thousand twenty. I went to bed. We were winning. I woke up. We were. It winning. was weird, we right? Were losing by a lot. It was the worst. Five, five. All of a sudden, yeah. Mysteriously, and now, all these votes came. Yeah. Through. Yeah. And no one's questioning the election yeah. or anything. What, what? 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 But, but the facts. The facts were, in my opinion, our opinion, we're not alleged anything. Is that. Five battleground states all stopped voting at about the same exactly time. Right. Right. Weird. Right. And rules that they had weren't <coughs> always followed and, and, and et cetera. And Trump talks about this and he still talks about this. Absolutely. And the people like other, you know, some, some of the rhinos that all don't talk about that. He's still talking about that. But also, we'll, let, we're going to get back to that in one second. But I, I, I want to bring us back to this. You talk about 2020. We're talking about the, the lockdowns and COVID and everything like that. You had pizza shops. I mean, there are people you probably know or, or, or restaurants or establishments that lost everything right. in the pandemic because they couldn't operate. Nope. There's no question about it. Yep. And, and in fact... Now, my brother had a business in Michigan. We were talking about yeah. Michigan. He had a hot dog business there who, fortunately, he was selling a product that wasn't... I mean, these people came... They drove up. It didn't up. matter. It, it a, didn't matter. He didn't, And he didn't have to close. Yeah. It was a... It, it was a drive-in where you drive up in your car, right. fortunately for him. So these people could come up and still get their dogs and not even have to get out of their car. No contact. So it worked out. But he had a fine dining restaurant that was the exact opposite. He had to, he closed that. Wow. Because he couldn't. No, you can't, you can't operate. In fact, there's. He didn't there's, do much carry out prior to that. And he wasn't doing any carry There's a new. It's not happening. I apologize. There's, there's a new documentary. And I can't remember who, who put it. It's out there. It's like 25 minutes. It just came out there. And it's about like that that maybe Fauci wasn't the one that that really it's talked about Dr. Burks. And what happened was I'm I'm gonna just butcher this up, I'm not alleging anything. I go I refer you to the documentary. I didn't do the research of but basically the theme of the documentary, I'm not talking about facts, but the theme of the documentary, in my opinion, was that Dr. Burks, who was put in charge, so Trump put Pence in charge of this right. task force. Right. Pence found Burks. Right. Puts Burks in there, and Burks and Fauci were used to the HIV stuff, and the, and and she was doing HIV, preventing HIV in, in in Africa. And it's like, hey, we can't have you know zero, you know, we want zero cases and all this, you know, all this types of stuff. And this was a different disease, Without right? It's a different deal. And and she basically what it was saying is Trump would go on on uh, do his speeches, do his rallies, you know, go on TV saying, hey, open up, open up, open up. And she's sending out these memos saying, uh, uh-uh, no, lockdown, lockdown, lockdown. And basically, how that 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 this bureaucrat was essentially, you know, allegedly, reportedly usurping the power of a president. It was crazy, and we've seen these bureaucrats that nobody knew. I mean, how many times were you dealing with, with? Would most people deal with the health department and all that type of stuff? I mean, you know what I mean. And you've got people coming around with their with their clipboards and stuff like going into churches, and the, oh, yeah. it was a different deal. And we were all at war with one another. Everybody was. You know, you go into a grocery store, you got arrows to follow up the aisles. If right. You, you went the wrong way. The distance of the footprints. You know, shopping cart. Oh, These my God. Come after you. Yeah. And everything. You, know? and, and listen, you couldn't even go into an you, establishment you, without a mask. You couldn't go anywhere. The people would ridicule you if you, you, you didn't have a mask. Child. Hey, you're the only we're, one. And we're putting them on. We're taking them on. We're putting them on. We, I see yeah. people were driving driving with masks by well, themselves. They still are. By themselves. Right now. What are they doing? Listen, I'm not an epidemiologist. No, I'm neither. not a doctor. I have no idea. I'm just, I, but I have logic. United right. States of America. Let, last time I checked. Oh my. Now, these with their yes. Masks. That goes back to, and, and it's not just here. Yep. New Zealand, Canada. Gosh, help us in Canada. Tourists. I wouldn't want to be, go ahead. What do you Brainwashed. Want? They're brainwashed. 
to the brainwash. This is so. That's why it goes back to how important this election is right now. No doubt. This is yes. so important. And do you think it's going to be? Who do you think? Well, who do you think is going to win? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. First of all, if they count the votes. Uh oh. Like they should. Oh, easy, easy, Joe. Easy, Joe. Easy, Joe. Do you? Okay. He won the last time. Oh, easy. Okay, okay. Wait a minute. Okay, we're not. We're not okay, we're not gonna. Okay, okay. Anyway, we're not. Co- no one's questioning the election. No one's doing anything like that. No. But you. But you feel. Okay. Right. All right. 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 But there was. There was. There was. Trump has criticisms because things were a little bit. You know. There's criticism. Yeah. But okay. But Biden's a president. But you right. think that you think that Trump. We all agree on that. Yes. But you think that Trump can win this time. There's right. no question. Now yes. you've got the media against him. You got you got the Zuckerberg. You got the what about that? The what about all these? What do people say? People. If we can get rid of these corrupt people that are trying his cases, like we're doing in Letitia James. No, we're not. Okay, we're not alleging anything there. No, but, okay, but, we're not. Okay, well, he's, you're getting me in trouble. I got to clean up there. Wait, this is, this is, is everyone, everyone has their own opinion. Right. Everyone has their, okay, but but yeah, we have problems with these. Do you things. okay? But do you think that the regular? So you're regular folks. I mean, do you? I'm very successful though. But do you think that people? Like, what are people saying about? It? Do you think people look at this and say this is craziness? Yes. Yes. They do. Oh, your neighbors and stuff are saying, forget it. I, no. N- no. No. I think people think it's just it's it's these are just crazy. T- I mean, it depends on which side of the aisle you're on. We're living in right. some crazy. We are. There are people are. that are not conservative that think completely the opposite of what what we think. Yeah. And we think that how can that be? How we can you think like that? Just, but do you think more people are coming to Trump? I either I think do. it's going to be very close we or do. I think it's going to be a Trump blowout. Ever since because, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, ever since all I this has been going on where they're they're trying to suppress stuff, he he keeps getting more support. Right. So I, that's the way I see it. Right. You know? Okay. Well, so let's talk about this very briefly because we're gonna we're coming up, we're gonna come up on a break. I know you guys have been very gracious and very patient. I have to go, Maserati. Yes. Why Maserati? What did you, what do you like about it? How'd you get over here? How? Tell me about that. We started with Alpha. We did start with Alpha. Alpha you did start with Alpha. Yeah, come on, high five it. on that. High five on that. We love it. Oh alpha. my gosh. She loves I like my you alpha. were you were an Alpha time. girl, but you wanted more. Yeah. And, and we love Alpha. Don't we get me wrong. Alpha. We love Alpha. But a Stel- but Stelvio step to Levante, Maserati couple Levante, steps, it's a couple steps up. Yes. Mona twin turbo uh, V6 engine, yes. 424 horsepower. Growls. It grabs yeah. like that speed. Start now, you are st- you are a car guy. I love cars. And I've got you tempted on that <laughs> travail. I got I got the boss over here is worried about the little the, 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 the ones and the, the zeros. Worried the, yeah, worried about that checkbook yeah, balancing right. out. I understand that. Yeah. But you've had a Hellcat. You've, the, tell, you've got a whole garage. you got a whole setup. Tell me about what you got going on. Oh, uh, we got the uh, Mercedes Benz that we just bought. Yes. We got rid of the Hellcat. Okay. And we had uh, another Charger before that, but these cars are on a different level. Why do you like Maserati? Um, you drove it on the way, highway. the way they feel, the, the way they drive, the way they sound. Oh, my gosh. How they're built, where they're built. Oh, my gosh. Right. You know? The heritage. Yes. The We're racing, yes. The, 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 the leather, the paint, the whole right. nine yards. And you don't see them everywhere. No. No. You don't see them hardly ever, any, any, anywhere at all. No, you, you know? don't see a lot of, you know, you see yourself driving down the street yeah. a lot. Right. You know? Tony's helped you. I've tried to help you. Tim's helped you. What has the experience been like at Maserati Sarasota? It's been great. It's been great. It's been 100% perfect. See, you'd come back. You'd tell your friends. Yes. You'd tell them what's going on. I don't need you to come back on my show. Yes. Hey, you come anytime you want. You have a lot to say. I I do. She See, and she was like, oh, I don't want to know. But I knew, but I knew, I knew, I she could feel back. it. I could feel it. And you, but and listen, people need to hear from people like you guys because you have a lot of experience. And you were talking about in your own family, how you have conversations with your son and other people yes. about trying to get engaged. You, you yes. can't just be asleep at the wheel because this is all of our lives. More people need to be involved. You're worried about More your kids and your grandkids. More now That's than right. ever. People need you know? to be involved. Because, you know, if before. They, I don't know that for some reason they just think that it's not affecting yes. you directly. It's yes. not. They don't realize that it is affecting but them. It's affecting them. It's funny. It's affecting I, them. Everything right. that goes on yeah. politically uh, affects them. I just want to make one last tell comment. Me, it's, tell it, me. it's funny because we have some people, our neighbors, some are conservative, some are not. Sure. Some are a couple. They're, one's conservative, one's not. Right. And I speak to, to them briefly, but the, the person that I speak to conservatively, that he's a conservative, I ask him, why do you, he goes, I vote with my wallet. Well, yeah, and it's, every, not, it's not a bad thing to do. Everybody was so much better off 
when Trump was president. They the were, economy was better. And his wife is completely the opposite. His, his, she thinks it's Trump's fault that she didn't get her knee replaced. Right. Oh, my God. But it's, it's just weird the way people think about these things because at the end of the day, you want to be better off. You want to, you're, you want to have a better economy. You want to have safer borders. You want to be able to afford groceries, gas. Insurance. And to live in this country. Right. Well, you had Cat Williams again on Joe Rogan this time saying that the media, Hollywood is there for, if it entertains you, that's great. Fake but news. it's there for propaganda. Yep. It's fake news. That's it's right. fake news with some of this stuff. It and gets worse, too. There was a kid, I say kid, but I mean, I don't know. Maybe he was in his 20s or something like that. I'm guessing. I have no idea. On TikTok, I saw this on Breitbart. And it was basically, was saying that, like, going, he was upset. He was doing a little rant, basically saying, like, you know, his rent went from twelve hundred dollars oh, yeah. to twenty one hundred dollars. He was a luxury apartment, and then and just going through the prices of everything's up. And he's like, dude, I can't afford. Like this is like, the people are punked. Yeah. It's been a while right, since we've had this out. type of economy oh, too. Yeah. Jimmy yeah. Carter, uh, right before Ronald Reagan came in. So it maybe was, it was bad, and then he came in and fixed it, but it took a while. If Trump is reelected, do you feel like he can clean it up I now? Wish he had four more I, years I wish after he this. Had, could have eight years, but yep. he should have had eight years to begin. That's Who right. do you want to see as VP? Vivek? Who do you like? Who do you like? Scott. Who do you like? Scott. Tim I Scott. Like Scott. Tim Scott's like a good guy. He's a guy. I like him too. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. I, think it's his t- I mean, I think it's. A I little, know. I'm not sure. Yeah, he's. A I little, like him all. He's a little too new, you know. Yeah. But he's he's more like Trump. Yes. You know. I and just want someone where if they impeach Trump or try some kind of shenanigans, right. that that what they're, they're gonna get is gonna be worse. Like, that's right. It, out of the frying pan into the fire. That's yeah, right. 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 There's some good ones right. out there though. There are a lot of good ones. Good choices. We're doing. Well, you guys are good customers, and you're doing your thing here. Yeah. Let me get you out here before I gotta do my break. Joe Mesco is Mrs. Mesco. Oh my gosh. I appreciate you, too. Oh, unbelievable. You. I'll let you talk to you guys. It's, it's unbelievable. Great. It's easy, right? How yeah. easy was that? She's that was so, easy. She's so much better of a talker than yeah, I am. Yeah, but you're, you're good. You're, you're you know, she, you guys she, are good. She, we have a lot she, to share. I want you to come back and talk about the feature shops and talk about entrepreneurship and talk about economics. I mean, part of it is like what I want to do with the show and what we're going to continue to evolve with the show is it's not just the, the left, right thing, politics. Of course, we got to cover that on News Talk 1040. And we love that. But it's also like, you know, maybe news or tips you can use to help yeah. improve your life. How do we make things better? What are the solutions? What can we do to help people out being positive? That type of stuff. Anyway, yeah. that's what I try. The thing I'd like to see, you know, at the end of the day is more conservative news programs. We need it's it. It's not enough. We need it. Patrick Bet David's got his thing. Yeah. Tucker Carlson, Tucker Carlson Network. Yeah. Rumble over here. Right. We, News Talk 1040. Yes. We're try- I'm trying. Yes. I'm trying. We, um, we need to get the word out. That's we do. We, need, we, we do. To. Well, you're welcome anytime. All right. Thank All you right, much. Man. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Take care. Be well. Okay. okay. All right, Paul, we got about 60 seconds here. Anything you want to say before the break? No, that was great. Those guys had a lot to say, and uh, it's very interesting. Uh, uh, well, of course, we know plenty about being in upstate New York, although we might not have been where he was. And look, I just it's its great to talk to the, the person on the street, the person at the dealership and kind of get their take. And really, it echoes that what they said echoes so much of what I see on X every single day. And, Absolutely. Uh, I thought they were perfect. Well, we're going to catch you here on, on the uh, at the other end of the break. And that is exactly right. That literally is, is someone off the street from the dealership giving their their feedback that was great to hear from the mescos hey i am john d Villarreal, and we're gonna be joined by paul Villarreal. next segment we're gonna talk about marjorie taylor green we're gonna talk about trump uh state of the union trump all kinds of other stuff so much more to talk about you're listening to the john d Villarreal radio show here on news talk 1040 and also live on youtube facebook linkedin and x we'll be right back in six minutes
Ten seconds. Hey, everybody, what's going on? It's me, John D. Valero, back for the second segment here on the John D. Valero Radio Show on News Talk 1040 and also live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and X. Here we go. We are talking second segment, players. We've got so much to talk about here. We're joined by Paul F. Villarreal by phone, and there's a lot, lot to talk about of what's going on. We had a State of the Union. That was super crazy, super crazy situation there. I mean, let's bring Paul in right now. I mean, we talked about it a little bit. We did a little bit of reaction, but I, I just thought that, look, on the one hand, give credit where credit's due. Biden showed up. He had energy. Uh, the room was was clapping with them with the Democrats. I think it was a, a stump speech. It was it, it it you know it was it, it felt political to me. I think if you were thinking that Biden's totally out of it, he's not going to be able to put you know do the prompter or put the speech together, or whatever. Then that was wrong. He proved you wrong on that. He he stepped up and was able to deliver on that. In terms of effectiveness, it wasn't really didn't feel like a st- so much a state of union. It felt really very campaigny to me. Uh, there was things that people said that like, yeah, we heard this last year and the year before. Uh, that doesn't really surprise me. It also seemed like he was kind of angry and shouting all the time. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a stylistic thing, but it was kind of a, it was kind of weird. You know, you kind of either have sleepy Joe or screaming Joe, in my opinion. So that was kind of a little bit bizarre, I felt. Um, and, you know, Let's say it's a good speech. It's one night. I mean, I think the Democrats, and in fact, I really, Paul, and we'll bring him in here in, 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 a, in two minutes or less. I really felt like in some ways it may really hurt the Democrats because those Democrats that want to, oh, Biden should drop out and we should put this person in and that person and Michelle Obama said she's not doing it. We don't know what's up with Gavin Newsom. You know, he, you know, he, he's somehow all over the place. But he, but hey, he supports Biden and stuff. And I'll get some some text sometimes like, hey, this is Gavin Newsom. We need to do this to Biden. And uh, so I got a California phone number. And anyway, it just was some bizarre stuff like that. I mean, Paul, what did you make of this State of the Union? But I think the fact that the fact that the Democrats liked it, and it takes if you will, the heat off of Biden to drop out, I think in the end could actually help Trump and the Republicans because in some ways, Biden is the strongest candidate they have. In some ways, he's one of the weaker candidates that they have, even though he's sitting the the sitting president right now. What are your comments on that, Paul? The biggest takeaway that I had afterwards was Fox News spoke with, they went to Reading, Pennsylvania, which of course I'm in Pennsylvania. Very key. And they went and talked to people in, I guess, a restaurant, like the day, you know, the day after, the morning after the State of the Union. And they spoke to one man, and what he told them was, he was like, look, I was only able to watch the speech for 10 to 15 minutes because he, because of all the yelling. And so that person was tuned out. They tuned out very quickly from the speech. And so I said this on X uh, soon after I watched it. One of the things that the, the one of the basic appeals or the main appeal of Joe Biden in the Rust Belt in Pennsylvania here and in other states around here is he has this kind of like almost Teflon, Mr. Magoo, just he's a good guy. Maybe he was a little bit, you know, maybe he messes up a little bit here and there, but he's a good guy and, a, and a, basically a, you know, a fun, nice person. And I thought that the speech just it just went against that image strongly. And to that's a good say, point. Yeah, that's yeah, a good to point. Have people say that they turned the speech off after 10 minutes because he was yelling completely just takes away from that entire image and narrative. And so in that regard, I thought it really did not help him. And Selena Zito, the reporter who is from Pittsburgh. um, Yeah, I think she used to work for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette or something. Something like that. But she's, again, she's extremely good at talking to kind of like, you know, the the average folks voter in the Rust Belt. Um, Just the best. I know she wrote a book about the 2016 election. And she said, look, I know that, you know, the day after the, the State of the Union, she said, I know that Biden won over the, the media last night, but this didn't go over well with a whole bunch of voters. They thought it was too, it's too angry, too partisan, too aggressive, and so on and so forth. So 
I, I agree with you. I think in the end, this probably did more damage than it did help for him. Yeah, and I think I think that it it, it, it stokes up the hyper partisanship, if you will. You've got a lot of the people maybe on you know the the super progressives online or the, that watch MSNBC or something like that that just want to own the GOP. I think that they got fired up with it, but it's just like the base is getting smaller and smaller on the Democrat side. And what what I what I said last segment about this this young kid basically or young adult young adult who was basically posting on TikTok, um, was they're fed up with it because the reality, you can have all the, you know, and we talked about this it, it, when I was driving in the car the other day. It's like the problem with the Democrats is they think everything's about winning the narrative or winning the news cycle because that's what it was for the, you know, Obama and Clinton and stuff like that with the media that really was fawning all over them, in my opinion, or definitely favorable. But the problem of it is, is that works when, you know, reality is unclear or murky or it could be argued or, or or different things or things are okay. You know, you have that luxury, you know what I mean? Like, but you don't like, just like societies that are very wealthy and, and, and secure and stuff can do a lot of art and, and entertainment, things like that. But when things are tough, when, when reality outstrips the narrative, narrative no longer matters because people know, like people talk about being in, in, and you know, for, for, for communist countries or former communist countries is like, yeah, we knew you know the, the media was lying to us, but you know, we, you know, we 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 understood what the reality was basically of, of whether it was the bread lines or whether it was you know different things of regime and basically they would they believe the exact opposite of what was said. You know what I mean? Like I mean, so what is what do you think about those comments? You agree? Do you think that the reality is just too devastating right now for the Democrats. Yes, I do. And I know that it is here in Pennsylvania. Uh, in 2023, last year, Pennsylvania had the highest year over year inflation rate increase in the price of groceries. Quite simply, things just cost too much. Yeah. People I... can't deal with it. And I know that Fox was, you know, they were in Reading and after the day at the State of the Union, well, they were in somewhere else in Pennsylvania. A few days before that and people were just all they wanted to talk about was how much things cost and so you could tell people oh everything's great the economy's doing amazing everything but they don't feel that that's not what they're experiencing i can tell you personally it's not what i'm experiencing so yeah i do think that reality is outstripping any attempted narrative i want to say one other thing with, uh, with regards to the state of the union the lasting thing that I have, the, the one, if I have to have one takeaway from that speech, in addition to just the overall tone, it is what he said about Lake and Riley and how he identified the individual involved with that. And he's been playing uh, damage control since then. Hmm. So that might be the thing that stays with him the longest from that speech. Interesting. In fact, on that note, on that, in that, in that zone, um, I think that was devastating. And I think the walk back from the, you know, Ill illegal immigrant thing uh, was also dev uh, devastating. And again, just to be clear, we're just talking. I'm not saying that I'm not calling anybody that we're we're just talking factually about what was said. But the but the and then we're doing political analysis, the political analysis, the optics, as you said, Paul, of being focused on the term what name we're going to use what, what what what's the politically correct term now is it if they went from illegal immigrants to undocumented to uh, uh and then there's also the dreamers and then it was like uh um newcomers i mean there's all kinds of different I mean, and all that but the focus on and again i'm not talking about that we're not getting into all that but the point is is that's the focus right now. And Biden had to walk that back, but yet you didn't even know her name. And people can make mistakes. I understand that. But it was like Marjorie Taylor Greene had to have the shirt on and had to like repeat it and had to say different things. And and the 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 optics are that the Democrats, right or wrong, I think have been seen to be slow to admit that there is an issue and a problem here. You know, and, and even Biden, I think, in, in either the State Union or no, the, actually... I think it was the follow-up interview with Capehart 
where they were cleaning some of this, they're trying to maybe clean some of the PR up, in my opinion, potentially, was saying, well, well, we just need a more orderly flow. Wait, what? Like, why should anyone be able to come over here if they're not doing it the right way? Why should they just be able to walk over the border? Why do we even, if that's the case, why do we even have an immigration process? Like, what are we talking about? Like, it just doesn't make any sense. And so I think that logic, along with the reality of the problems, I saw, saw a video, Paul, of uh, someone walking around Los Angeles. Los Angeles used to be, that used to be like Hollywood and and the place where everybody wanted to go and and the you know the the, the, the city of dreams and everything like that. You had tents of homeless. You had people all up in the in the in the subway and stuff like that. You put, walking around, seem like they may be on drugs potentially. Uh, there's been a, a big YouTube channel that just drives around Philadelphia looking at someone's. You're seeing city after city. You know, uh, Chicago, New York, there's so many other places where people are getting displaced. They can't afford rent. They can't afford to, to, to live. And yet you've got people that, that some of these nonprofits and stuff that are renting out and the government is or they're renting out uh, hotels and stuff like that, taking the hotel signs off them. These people are staying there. You're getting free food, free lodging, um, free education, all this. And you've got other people who have been here or homeless or paid their taxes and they cannot afford it. It kind of reminds me of that veteran that went up and asked Nikki Haley, hey, you spent tens of millions of dollars on your campaign in Iowa. You got went nowhere. Why are you still in this race? That money could have went to veterans and stuff like that. And then and her response was, did you know my husband's a veteran? Okay, that's not answering the question. Why are you spending tons of money on a vanity campaign when it could be better spent on taking care of people here? And I'm not saying, I mean, again, there's a balance, but it, 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 no one faults Nikki Haley for wanting to run for president. But when it became clear pretty quickly that there really wasn't a path, and as you said before, Paul, and I think very eloquently that, and, and we'll get to this probably in the third segment, maybe, maybe some now, there really was not that many, in my opinion, if you look at the polls, and I know you look, follow the polls of Richard Barris and others, there it doesn't seem like there was that many really seriously dedicated Nikki Haley voters. It was more of the anti-Trump vote or the Trump alternative vote, right, that went from Governor DeSantis then to Nikki Haley. And, so, and that's, I think, what was going on. So when you saw that, and then at the end there, you really were just a foil for Trump and were wasting money. And there was, there was an article about how much money was wasted. It was clear that Trump was going to win the whole time. And I, I agree with that. And, and why wouldn't he? He was a former president. He had the most votes that any Republicans ever gotten. I mean, everything on paper told you that this was going to be Trump's uh, election on the GOP side. And it, the fact that people couldn't see this and the big mega donors stuff like, just shows how out of touch the system is and the corporatists are, okay? And, you know, Alex Jones and Tucker Carlson talked a little bit about that. And so when you have these events that people are seeing and the reality is dealing with it, the narrative doesn't matter. They're trying to shame Trump and the lawfare and stuff, and all of it is falling apart. We just saw now there was an article on Fox News about maybe we didn't, maybe some, maybe we didn't get all the facts from the J6 committee. And here we go, you know, they're they're wheeling out there uh, Liz Cheney to talk about this. Well, I don't need to hear from Liz Cheney. I don't want to hear from Liz Cheney. I don't want to hear from Kinzinger. I don't want to hear from it. You know what I'm saying? And so, what do you think, Paul? I mean, do you feel like? Do you feel like the events that this is going to be a competency election? Is it a choice election? Is it a, is it, is it a referendum election? Do you think that this is going to be a referendum on the performance and capability and competency of this Biden administration? Well, if it is a referendum election, Joe Biden is likely going to lose. That's that's my personal prediction. You mentioned January 6th. Uh, representative, I believe his name is Louder Milk, just put out a new a new report or assessment on that uh, a few minutes ago, actually. Oh. And just kind of going through a, a couple highlights on that. And he says there's more information to come about it. So that's an evolving picture itself. Also, I want to say that in the last hour, CNN just dropped a story with a supposedly, supposed former Mar Mar Lago uh, employee who said that they uh, um, unknowingly helped move classified documents at, at, at Mar-a-Lago. So they're that story is they're trying to rekindle that story again. I think, look, 
I think there is a desperate need if you're the Democrats and Joe Biden to try to make this a comparison election and then try to do as much um, opposition type research and framing of, of President Trump as you can because that's your best hope. Will it hold? I don't know. Right now, it doesn't look like it. And one of the things we can talk about um, that happened over the weekend was Trump going to UFC 299. Huge, huge, huge. The reception he got there, not just from the audience, but from some of the influencers and stars there that were happy to be with him shows. Off the roof, off the chain. We're not in 2020 anymore. No, we're not. We're not in 2020 anymore. And the other thing I want to say, and... and, um, uh, definitely, so I'm someone that knows a lot about you know business, economics, things like that. In my opinion, one of the things that we should have talked about, and hat tip to uh, Sundance, and I and I guess uh, Sundance is following you on 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 on, on uh, Twitter, There's an X rather, uh, and you you know Paul keeps growing his following in there on X. He's probably getting close to seventeen thousand five hundred followers now. Definitely seventeen thousand three hundred followers. It just keeps going, and more and more important people are following uh, Paul on X. Uh, one of the one of the um, points that he made which i think was good and it's an obvious point but it, but but it definitely you know, not i'm not, not super obvious definitely needs to be the economic part of it anyway is that one of the reasons food prices are going up so much is immediately and they're trying to they're trying to like blame this you know they're trying to do to do the whole narrative engineering thing in my opinion uh the democrats are trying the propaganda uh, angle but one of is when Biden went in, they want to push the build back better and the green agenda and the Green New Deal and all this type of stuff that has always been there. And it goes back to Rahm Emanuel. You know, they've got this list of, of, of initiatives they always want to do. And as soon as there's a crisis, never let a cri- good crisis go to waste. And then here comes the here comes the agenda time. And by pushing the green agenda and basically stopping, you know, the pipeline and stopping Anwar and do and 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 shutting down uh, the oil and gas industry or at least you know uh, limiting it limiting it versus not obviously not fully shutting down we when i'm not saying that i'm not alleging that we're not alleging anything but the policies are less favorable in my opinion in this administration in executive orders and stuff than it was in the trump administration and you may say oh that's great john we need to get to a clean energy and 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 green economy and all that okay but here's the problem again we're taking the politics out of it. We're just looking at this analysis here, if you will, from an economic standpoint. What is, and this is happening worldwide. And when you look at some of the protests over there in Europe, in, you know, Germany and Poland and Denmark and stuff like that. So what is a very uh, uh, fuel and energy intensive business, whether it's from fertilizer, delivery, uh, water, growing, it's food, it's agriculture. And so if you raise the inputs of your energy, your food, your feed, your transportation, getting the eggs, getting the meat to market, all stuff, whatever it is, that dramatically affects the price of food, okay? If you double your delivery costs, you double your energy costs, you double or triple your water bills, stuff like that, that has massive effects on your, your food. And so, and, and who does that affect the most? That affects the people with the l- lower incomes the most, with less wealth the most. That's who it affects. So it almost becomes a regressive energy tax, Paul. Would you agree with that? I do. And I mean, that's one of the reasons why when Trump talks about how he's going to handle inflation and cost uh, on the campaign trail, the first thing he says is drill, baby, drill. Meaning if we can increase the energy supply, we can cut the energy cost, meaning that the cost of everything else like food is going to come down. Mm-hmm. See, I totally agree with that. Absolutely. No question about it. And so, you know, economics are, are taking front and center. And, and listen, you've gotten you've seen stuff all over the the world and, you know, uh, really affected. And that's why you've got a lot of these protests whether it be in, in France and Germany and, and a lot of different places um, that are really saying like, hey, you know, the, the, the farmers out there, like this is devastating to us. Like we can't do this. I mean, this, this, what, these policies might sound good at some think tank or, or some conference or, or whatever it is, 
but this is affecting us, you know, right here now. If you don't have food security, wow, that's a that's a big big problem. That's a huge problem right there, and a lot of people they, they can't deal with that. You still have issues with what's going on up in Canada, and you've got the conservatives MPs there that I think are starting to make some progress vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Justin Trudeau because you know these policies aren't working. So I think you're in a zone now where. Almost really, quite frankly, they were trying to buy economics thing. But I think if you look at the State of the Union, maybe I'm reading too much into this, Paul. But I feel like Biden, the Democrats are almost conceding that we can't defend this record. We just got to blame Republicans for it. And we just got to go, you know, on the offensive, on the narrative. And you, would you agree with that? No, I definitely agree with that. I, I think that the plan here is to go try to make this about Trump as much as possible rather than about Biden and about Biden's record. Because I, 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 it's just what you said. I don't think you can really plausibly defend it. And I know that part of the plan, apparently, or reportedly, that Biden is going to do, and I guess he laid it out maybe in the State of the Union, was to talk about how corporations, maybe the corporations are the cause of inflation or shrink, you know, shrinkflation and this type of thing. So it's kind of like it's other people's fault and Trump is worse than I am rather than let's talk about what I've done in the last four years. So I, I just, look, uh, you know, I, I just don't know if that's going to work. I mean, I guess we're going to find out if it'll work. And as you mentioned a few minutes ago, that's, you know, there are people who believe that that's why they're um, piling on the legal cases against Trump to try to try to help, you know, kind of weigh him down even more from from an image standpoint. Yeah, and it's weird. And we've talked about it before. We'll talk about it again. I mean, at least for a while, I think uh, I think Attorney General, New York Attorney General Letitia James, was posting on her ex account the interest, like the amount of interest that you know Trump is going to have to pay in the judgment. I mean, I just, I just feel like that's very strange, very weird. From uh, you know, I mean, this, these DAs and Attorney Generals are supposed to be, you know, if they're state prosecutors, are supposed to be neutral. Like I, I just don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get that. I don't understand that. But, I mean, you know, some have pointed out that, look, when she was being elected, some of these are elected positions, obviously, the state attorney general's elected position, that she was campaigning on, you know, uh, uh, about Trump, you know, in some ways, which I find very, very bizarre, um, the whole situation right there. And so I just think that, you know, we're in a very strange place right now. We talked to the uh, um, uh, the Mexicos and stuff like that, and I, I, you know, they were great to come on. And I feel like people know this is this is a very partisan atmosphere right now. It's a very important election right now. That's why people are tuning in News Talk 1040 to get all the information, up to date stuff um, uh, here. Absolutely, and you know, um, you can call in too if you would like to call in. You can call in on the next hour at 727-587-1040, 727 587 1040 would love to have you uh, on the program and talk about some different issues. Although I do have to say, I don't have my headphones on right now, so I'm not sure that, that totally works. Um, I can also take comments here on uh, on YouTube and X that will come over and we'll take your comments here on the live chat so we can do that as well. But what are people talking about right now, Paul? Very, very quickly, we got about two minutes here on X. I mean, what, what was the reaction on X with that Save the Union? I think the reaction was, it's what you said, which is I think a lot of Democrats uh, were, were pumped up about it. You know, they, they saw, okay, Biden has energy and he's fighting, so to speak, quote unquote, and, um, and so forth. But I, I think a lot of neutral people, certainly people on the right, didn't like it and just thought it was too, like, you, you, there were, just seemed like no olive branches at all to the Republican Party. And that's just not traditionally the way that that speech is given and delivered. And to be honest, I think a lot of people on the right saw kind of a desperate, desperation play from Biden in the speech. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And, and you know, we also had the, you know, the Democrats wearing white and stuff like that. I think it's going to be, you know, running on the Trump and the, and the lawfare 
and you know he's so bad in the shaming and abortion and, and things like that so anyway lots to talk about lots to talk about next hour players you're listening to john dvl radio show here on news talk 10 40 a.m also live on linkedin youtube facebook and x stay tuned the next hour we're going to talk about the economy we're going to talk about all kinds of other stuff elon musk lots to talk about stay with us we'll see you next hour around 506 
Hey, buddy, what's going on? It's me, John D. Villarreal. You're listening to the John D. Villarreal Radio Show here on News Talk, 1040 AM, and also live on link- LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and X. This is the John D. Villarreal Radio Show here on News Talk 1040, all over the greater Tampa Bay area. We're having a good time right now. It's a beautiful Monday afternoon, March. Hey, what about this? Daylight savings time. We lost an hour, but we gained some daylight, and it's definitely fun. And the question is, you look at these polls, Paul. I mean, has Trump really gained some daylight on President Biden? President Biden is down. I'm seeing like three, four, five points. I'm seeing Biden down in these swing states. We talked about how this election may come down to Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia. We had the incident with State of Union. And we're going to talk about that a little bit more. We also have to talk about Super Tuesday and Nikki Haley dropping out. But we have the the we had the incident uh, where in the State of the Union, President Biden kind of messed up with Lake and Riley's name there. Trump had the uh, rally in Georgia. We had Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene that really put it to uh, President Biden and. And I think Biden really fumbled that. And I think he also fumbled the response afterwards with Jonathan Capehart. Sometimes these elections, you know, you don't want to overblow an issue and we're still a ways out. But sometimes these elections in some of these states are decided by a thousand ballots, five thousand, ten thousand. I mean, I think, you know, it, some of these are very, very close. Where do you think we are? Well, so let's talk about that. What about the Lake and Riley uh, uh, how big of an issue is that? Trump met with their family at the ra- rally. I think that he blew the roof off of that. And um, she w- was from, and her family's from Georgia. Talk to me about the overall impact and the impact potentially in Georgia of this uh, tragic situation. Yeah, so Trump had a rally in Rome, Georgia, which is basically the northwest corner of Georgia. It's a little bit northwest of Atlanta. Lake and Riley's family, from my understanding, is from northern suburbs of Atlanta. And University of Georgia is in Athens, Georgia, which is a, a little bit like northeast of Atlanta. So this is all very small, relatively small area. And so where the, the rally was, was accessible to the family, apparently. And it seems like a number of them and f- friends came and attended the rally. And there's a picture I saw today of, of President Trump with, like, you know, 10 or 15 people of, of that group, family and friends. And uh, look, the rally was, uh, honestly, I think that was like one of the most emotional times I've ever seen with Trump and at the rally. And I think it was because he just met with the family right before he went and did the rally. And so like when he was talking about Lakin and all, you could see he was really affected. And um, I honestly, I think it's going to be a very big deal in this campaign because it's such a it's an issue that everybody can relate to i mean this is a young woman who you know a college-age person who seemed to have things really going for her and i mean it's i think it's the kind of situation that's going to resonate for a lot of different people and a lot of different groups and so i i think it's a big deal and i it's become a bigger deal, in my opinion, because of the way that that President Biden has handled it. And I, you know, I mean, he's still trying to deal with it now. And so I, I think it is something that's going to be there. And it's a, I mean, it's, there, there are situations where, you know, this are more situations like this can develop. And so it's not something that's kind of a finite thing, so to speak. And so it's, uh, I think it's going to, I think it's going to linger. <laughs> well, so, and we talked about, we talked about, you know, a lot of times the, 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 the purple strategies, people, the no labels, people, there's a good article, punk out, no labels, people. Well, you know, the Carl Rove, and, uh, in my opinion, a lot, some of these analysts are like, oh, it's all de- decided by the independents and the, and the suburban moms and, and the suburbs. And this is an issue it's, it's super tragic. You don't want to politicize anything, you know, uh, like this. Uh, however, I think not, not. I don't want to say that's not the right word. Separately, I think that if I'm someone, a parent, I'm a parent, and you read that account of the reality of what happened to you know the uh, uh, 
uh, Lake and Riley, that is something that would concern a lot of parents out there, I would think, Paul. Can you hear me? Paul, can you hear me or no? Yeah, sorry. I, I no, was muted there for a second. You're I good. I muted myself. Okay. I just said muted myself, unfortunately. Yes, I do think a lot of parents can relate to this. This is a this is a type of, of, of an occurrence that I think worries parents or could worry them more than anybody else, anything else. It's your child. You've raised them. They're off at school. They're, they're at college. They're doing well, but you're not there with them. And you think everything's okay, and suddenly it's not okay. So yes, I mean this is a it's it's a it's a nightmare situation, and it's the type of thing that I think everybody dreads, and uh, nobody wants to be in this thing. And it's not about politicizing it; it's about this is real. This just happened. It's happened other times, and so it's something that has to be. I mean, it's it's something that has to be dealt with in terms of in in the political reality. It's something that is taking place. Well, Same way that prices are higher, that's just real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me let me correct myself. It's not about making it political. It's not about politics, but it is about policy. It is about the policy versus Trump versus the policy versus Biden. And Biden said, I, I sorry, Trump said, I think, I mean, you, you can correct me, I, you've been following the, the rallies, but I thought I heard a snippet out there where he said that this would not have happened under his administration. Did he say that? Yes, he did say that. Okay, and then, and that's something that people have to have to evaluate. You know, that's a claim that people have to evaluate. Certainly, we had very different policies, and you know, there, you know, Trump from coming down the escalator and stuff very early on was talking about the immigration issue and the bo- the border issue, really, the border issue. Um, and a lot of people gave him a lot of criticism for that. That issue, and you know, may look a little different in 2024 than it did in 2020, and so it's funny because, you know, as much as they try to punk out Trump, in some ways it makes him stronger, but also like, you know, people sort of come around to his way of thinking. Where, I just feel like it's one of these issues, much like the Middle East stuff like that, where, you know, the Democrats are going to have a hard time with with this issue, Paul. Like, I think things are really breaking away from them. Because at the end of the day, like, you know, people want uh, security. People want safety. People want good jobs. People want to be able to afford food and stuff like that. Like, these policies are just devastating. And I just feel like sometimes with, with, the, with the progressives in there and the liberals, it's all about, you know, you, you know bullying your opponents or, or, or people that don't agree with you. And, and 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 you know punking them out and then you know just winning the narrative and 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 all that stuff and stuff and we'll get into for the last segment you know Google AI and, and just the debacle with all this type of stuff but do you do you feel like like you said if you brought something up very interestingly there what else could happen I mean the Democrats I mean they, nobody knows how many people have been let in this country and 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 you know, are they some of these? You don't you don't know if they're with you know MI thirteen. You don't know if they're trafficking fentanyl. You don't know if they've been you know uh, if there's if they're a criminal from one of these other countries stuff like that. Obviously, there's lots and lots of great great people. This is no indictment on 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 anyone, and this is no indictment on on people looking for a better way of life. But you are breaking the laws that are on the books in terms of, of, of the immigration laws and policies in my, well, uh, how do I say this? You know, the border is supposed to be enforced. Okay. There are laws about immigration in the border. I'll say that. Let me revise and extend to that. Okay. And it, as you said, it's not the 98%, 99%, 99.1%, even if it's 99.999%, you have millions, if not tens of millions, that have come over here, and it all it takes is for you know one, two, five, ten, twenty, a hundred of these incidents, and hopefully there's not. I mean, it's very scary, and we we don't want any incidents. But to the extent that these things happen, that can create a big, big problem. And some have have speculated on the right that some of this stuff is not being covered, and it's and it's 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 being spun by the media. What are your comments, Paul? 
I agree with you. Look, it is my understanding, and I'll check this, uh, I'll review this maybe during the break. It's my understanding that the individual uh, implicated in the Lake and Riley situation, I think, has been identified or uh, associated with um, Venice, a Venezuelan gang. Now, wow. I have to look that up. I want to make sure I'm right about that, but I'm pretty sure. And so it's like, again, we're not just, this isn't just, you know, it's, it's, it's a different type of a thing. It's a different type of a situation that you're dealing with there. As you said, MS-13. I mean, it's one thing to I want people to come in and come into the country and help and, and contribute, which I mean, we're totally pro-immigrant, everything. It's another thing to involve, to bring in people that you know where there might be questions or 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 there's, there's concerns, potentially. Um, I do think that, I do think what you said is, is correct, which is that this is real. This is something that's happening or can happen. This isn't something about a, a kind of vague uh, theory or about protecting democracy or, or some, some high-minded thing. This is real life that's happening with people's, people's families. I mean, that's a very serious thing. And I think that's a much more, I think people care, would care and do care a lot more about this type of a, of a, of a situation and this type of an issue much more so than did they care about did did Donald Trump pay Michael Cohen $150,000 for whatever? You know what I mean? That doesn't affect anybody. Whereas the Lake and Riley situation could affect me and my family. And I care about that. Uh, it makes a lot of sense, absolutely. And the same thing with the gas prices and the same thing with the job situation and the same thing with rent and stuff like that. Because it's not, you've got all these things. It's like what the guy was saying on TikTok. It's not just safety and security. Because again, it's a, it's a matter of percentages and stuff like that. And, you know, when you've got situations where there's things that are overcrowded and stuff and, and they've done different experiments and stuff, I mean, you, you, we, when you have things that are over, systems that are overwhelmed, it can create stress on society and it can create problems, okay? And, you know, it, you're having a, a high level of, of people just flood, flood in here and it just doesn't, it's not doing well. And so even if, like you said, 99.999%, you know, so you could have, again, 99% plus, you know, another two or three zeros, uh, one out of every 10,000. If you got a problem of one every 10,000, you could even have a, a, a problem one every 100,000. And, and with this volume of people coming over, it can be a serious problem. And here's the other thing. You don't know who's coming over. So on the one hand, and on, on many respects, on the one hand, you and you had to lock down, and people need to be tested, and we need uh, you know boosters and everything like that. And then you had a, you had basically an open border, and you had no idea who's coming over here, what their status is, you know, uh, uh, health wise or anything like that. No, I no idea. You've got reports about people flying in from you know. I think someone said there was like. I can't remember what the number is, but just a lot. Like, I think it was a, a big, big number of, you know, Chinese nationals that were flying in. And it's not the only one. There's people from Somalia. There's people from, you know, all, all over. All, so, so we're not singling any place out. You know, it was, it was globally, uh, along with, you know, South and Central America and, and everything like that, okay, that were flying into Ecuador, then flying into Tijuana, then getting with the coyotes or, or whatever and going up. And getting into uh, um, uh, in, 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 into America, you don't know who's coming over here. You don't know why it's coming over. And in fact, uh, um, Alex Jones was on Tucker Carlson and saying, unfortunately, he thinks it's 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 not a matter of of if it's a matter of when that another you know uh, bad incident happens because because of this unchecked border. You don't know who's coming over here or what they're planning or anything like that. So instead of spending, you know, some would say maybe, Paul, instead of spending time checking out moms at school board meetings because they don't like some of the books and some of the some of the uh, uh, radical agenda that's being put in some of these schools. OK, potentially. Uh, and Chris Rufo and others have talked about that. And Chris Rufo, you know, uh, um, oh, I think a board member over here at the new school in Sarasota, right, in North Sarasota. Um, and you have Alex Jones saying that on Tucker Carlson 
and people are very very worried but also you know the same thing with with what this what this guy was saying um and there's an article about this too like I'm, I'm trying to cite two things at once but what the tiktok video was saying is that look rents have gone up everything's gone up when you have a situation where you know you have excess demand for housing or or fill in the blank what is you know is supply and demand for all these things if you have an outsized demand and not enough supply it raises the price for all kinds for for everyone so it's just it's just not really a great situation it's really not fair where people can't you know they have less security uh, more traffic uh um you know more more demand for services you know what happens if you if you have an issue and you want to go to the hospital and you can't go to the hospital the hospital doesn't have enough beds because things are jammed up it's on and on and on same thing with schools and whatnot and it's just i i just feel like this is an issue now paul and we can all go on down the line with this i think this is an issue that has definitely hit home and even san francisco is starting to walk back you know the 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 as some would say liberal policing policies that have that have been happening here because you've got a hollowing out of their merchants out there of some of the some parts of the city where where you know stores are like yeah, we just can't be here anymore you know you know where, where you you saw these videos of people just shoplifting and doing whatever and just rolling out and it's just becoming untenable i mean this thing is falling apart what are your comments paul yeah, look, I agree with you. Let me just say this. I mentioned about uh, the individual. His name is, is uh, Jose Ibarra, who is the, the suspect in this. And I want to say, just to clarify, that the his brother, Diego, is the individual who may have ties to Venezuelan gangs. So I just want to clarify that because we're all about fairness and accuracy here. We don't know about, about uh, Jose himself. Um, look, I, I completely agree with you. Again... You cannot have the type of influx that is happening at the border right now. That seems to be happening from all reports without having interaction, whatever it is, whether it's positive, negative, whether it's it's people coming into the job market, whether it's it's in New York City and Chicago that might be having difficulty with, with uh, uh, managing resources or, unfortunately, the situation with Lake Riley. I mean, when you have that many people coming into the country so quickly, there's going to be all kinds of things that occur from that. And that's the reason why, again, I mean, uh, people who want to um, manage or, or more, uh, more carefully scrutinize immigration will tell you, we need to know or we want to know who these people are. We want to know who's coming in. Well, so, and, so and, and, and let me, let me for that. sorry, real quick, let me pause you. Let's remember something. Two things that are really important. So there was something happening in Denver. And and basically, you know, tents. And De- Denver's a kind of liberal city over there in Colorado. And there's some, you know, we, we had the Colorado Supreme Court ruling and stuff like that. So there's interesting politics in, in, in Colorado, right? But it's, it's, some would say it's, it's, it's still a bit of a swing state and stuff as well. Um, and again, sometimes there's a big difference between the cities and then the, and then the uh, and then the, the suburban and, and 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 rural areas, right? In some different places. But so the whole thing was um, basically that they were do, they're going to do something for uh, uh, you know the the migrants, right? Some kind of like you know housing. Some kind, they'll put them up. There's some kind of stipends. There's, there's, there's some kind of different deals that they were going to do. Oh, oh yeah, it was something about like it was something about like rent. The, oh yeah, that was what it was. <clears throat> that landlords should let them rent out places, basically. And someone's like, "Wait a minute, how were they? How are they gonna? Don't you need a? Don't you need a license? Don't you need a, a government ID to rent something else? Don't you need a job? Don't you need like how are you gonna rent these places out? How are they gonna have the money to rent these places out?" Like it doesn't mean like how, like how is this supposed to work? So you're just gonna put this on the private uh, private landlords, and then they, 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 these pe- people win, and then how they what how, how do you evict them? And how, how how what like what possible way can some like I can tell you this right now, players. Like I'm here in Sarasota, and we all know like if you're in in in, in Florida, rents went up explosively. I remember interviewing Lauren Coffee right from the um, uh, Tampa Bay Inno and stuff like that reporter it's like yeah you know, i remember that that interview it was a while back it's like my rent went up 500 bucks a month and you know i may say oh, okay 500 bucks well for a lot of people 500 dollars a month is a lot 
And so basically, like, if you are, you know, if you're, if, if you're in New York City and your rent went from 6,500 to 7,000, that's, you know, that's definitely a big jump, but it's not as impactful as if your rent went from like 1,000 to 1,500. That's a huge jump, right? That's a, that's a dare, very different price point. But so anyway, the point is, is like these rents were going up. I mean, you know, there's a lot. Of, I'm not going to get specific into my situation, but there's a lot of people that are renting stuff that were right up around $3,000 a month, $2,000 a month, $4,000 a month. Let's just, you know, let's anywhere in that zone, right? And, and for a two bedroom or something like that, let alone three bedroom, let alone a house. Are you kidding me? Trying to rent a house around here in Sarasota? You could be easily north of 5Gs, easily. That you, you're not even breaking a sweat to do that, okay? Depending on where it's at and stuff like that because of the, of the, of the popularity of this area and, the, and, and all that. Okay, great. So you've got some, depending on where you rent, what you're doing and what the situation is, you've got to be able to prove like, you know, 2.5, 3X income, stuff like that. So you've got to be able to prove that you're, and again, I'm not giving any financial advice, legal advice, any other kind of advice and not licensed in Florida, blah, 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 blah. I mean, so if you're renting someplace for three Gs, let alone five G's, you got to show that you can do like, you're, you're cracking down nine G's to 15 G's a month, players. So how are you going to do this in Denver? Denver is not a super cheap place either. Boulder, Denver, I mean, there's no there's no cheap places there. I mean, <clears throat> what are we doing? I think that was actually, I think I saw that on uh, Fox uh, Sunday Night in America, Trey Gowdy's program. I mean, this is how crazy it's getting, Paul. We've got about two minutes left here. Uh, quick comments on that. Yeah, I think what's really interesting, I mean, about all of this is that now the rest of the country, like New York City, yes. like Chicago, is starting to understand what Texas and people on the border have been telling them for years. Basically, we told you we can't handle this and that there's too much, too many people coming in too fast. And now you're experiencing it for yourself and seeing that we were right. And I agree with you. I think that you're correct about the Denver situation. I know that they are having kind of a crisis of resources right now in regards to this. And look, I mean, it's, again, you know, America is the land of immigrants. Absolutely. You, we love immigrants. There is absolutely 100%. But you got to do it the right way. You have to have a process. You have to, right. Go ahead. There has to be some way to manage it. If not, it just becomes... It can be chaotic, and I think that's what we're seeing right now. And unfortunately, there are there can be bad consequences to that. Yeah, absolutely. We got about thirty seconds here. We wrap up. There was an MIT. There's a video up on YouTube, and it's years old. MIT professor has basically had like these these jars and marbles and stuff like that, and was talking to his audience. And you know, students are probably were liberal and stuff like that up there in you know that Cambridge MIT area, Harvard MIT area, and was basically saying like, look. You can't take everybody. Like, it's just not possible. The system that the won't won't support it. Yeah, sure, having some immigration, having a rational policy, that, that all makes sense. But it's just too much. The math isn't there. And if you have an uncontrolled border, anyone and everyone that ever wanted to come, that can come, might do it. Anyway, we got to wrap up. I love it. This is the John D. Villero Radio Show here on News Talk 1040. And my name is John DeVillero, and we're also live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and X. Next segment, we're going to talk about Elon Musk. We're going to talk about the economy. We're going to talk about election 2024. So much to talk about. We'll be also take your comments as we get them. You're listening to the John DeVillero Radio Show here on News Talk 1040. We'll be back for the last segment in about six minutes.
Hey everybody, what's going on? It's me, John D. Villarreal, and this is a John D. Villarreal radio show here on News Talk 1040, live on LinkedIn, YouTube, Facebook, and X. Joined by Paula Villarreal, last segment players, here we go. It is Monday, 534, on a beautiful, beautiful uh, March day here. Daylight savings, we lost an hour, we gained some sunlight, that's kind of nice. We got the sun shining right over here. Uh, it feels like it's, I don't know what it's like over there in Pennsylvania, Paul. I'm sure it's cold, but here it feels warm. It feels nice. It's almost beach weather. I don't know if I'd get in the water, but I mean, some people would, if you're visiting from, you know, who knows where, you know, somewhere, somewhere cold, you might think this is fantastic. And it really, really kind of is. If I can check uh, the temperature right now, let me see what my temperature is saying. Oh my gosh, 76 degrees, players. That's amazing. That is beautiful. I mean, it got a high of 77. Tomorrow, 78. I mean, Thursday is 82. That, wow, this weekend we're seeing 80s. It's it's fantastic. A lot of opportunity here. Uh, this is great. And that's part of the reason why people love Florida and the News Talk 1040 audience loves that. So let's talk about this. Let's. Let, let, there's a lot of things happening right now. Let's talk about you know what's going on with elon musk let's talk about the economy there's a lot of stuff happening right here um and look i mean this is this is really wild right here you're talking about linkedin is investing more in journalism we'll talk about that um a lot of college grads are overestimating their starting salaries by like thirty thousand dollars and we're talking about this economy maybe maybe this this sheds some light into the border thing people are speculating that hey you know investors like it because it raises asset classes it also you know cheaper labor and corporations big corporations but how it's hurting it's crushing a lot of these policies the biden policies bidenomics if you will are crushing the middle class and here we're seeing that like um the number of super rich super rich now it's not when we're talking about super rich, we're not talking about half a million. We're not talking about a million. We're not talking about five million. We're talking 30 million plus players has increased 44% in the last five years. Okay. And that's a big deal. And yet you're seeing, you know, other people that are suffering in terms of inflation outstripping the increase in salaries and compensation what do you think the vibe is out there right now economically, Paul? I mean, people are trying to talk about soft landing, things like that. I don't think people are buying it. I mean, like I, I recounted last week when, you know, look, I, I can remember not long ago at all where orange juice was three ninety nine dollars <clears throat> if you bought it at like Publix or Aldi or something like that for a gallon. It was, you know, their brand and something like that taste is good everything now we're and we're in florida right the citrus state and all that we've got the orange bowl here and everything and now then it went up to four dollars so excuse me five dollars then six dollars and when i went last time it was eight dollars crazy what do you think people are feeling right now with this economy and are we getting to a situation where it's almost like a a quasi aristocracy and we'll talk about the tech oligarchs and we'll get into that in one second where people are like hey you've got the super rich and you've got everybody else which is under you know underclass that has no power no opportunity and it's really bad is this crushing the american dream is bidenomics that's the bottom line is bidenomics crushing the american dream paul yeah i think it is and we've brought up this analogy before and i just just kind of uh uh, alluded to it right there is Hunger Games. You got a certain group of people that are doing unbelievably well and incredibly well, and then you get away from the capital, and maybe it's not so good. I can tell you right now, you said, you know, 44% increase of the super wealthy there, people with $30 million or more net worth. I mean, people are struggling badly to pay their rent and get food right now. I mean, I see it all around me. I've told you, I think I, I've said on the show recently about seeing people at the food bank here and i've heard uh i've heard stories of other places in pennsylvania seen increases in food bank usage so yes i do think there's a disconnect yeah the stock market's doing great if you got a lot of money and you got money in it you're you're doing amazing but if you're on that bottom half bottom uh third i think it's really really difficult right now and i one thing i saw recently was that more uh, 
more people with disabilities are working, which is in and of itself is good. That's a great thing. However, my guess is that's be, is it, it's happening because they have to, because they can't make ends meet. And so that is, that's not a situation that you want to see happen. And uh, look, I, I just, right now the vibe here in Pennsylvania, I can tell you from overall is that it's really difficult. People don't see whatever Janet Yellen might be seeing in terms of the economy. And I, I just think that that's the way people view things. Super crazy. And then you, you, you overlay that with the tech oligarchs and what happened with this Google uh, Gemini AI and stuff like that. And we're live on on YouTube and, and have, a you know, I've definitely got a lot of views on the, on, on the videos on YouTube and have done well. But we recount the stories of how it was going crazy and super big and bigger and crowder at the time for long, for many, many, many years, a long time players, like a long time, like almost, a, almost like, you know, somewhere between seven to 10 years, something like that. And, but, you know, we had a hot two, three years and then it just bungee jump. And, and it's like, yeah, a lot of people are like, Hey, how'd you get in the car business? Stuff like that. And listen, I can't prove a negative or anything like that. We, we don't have time enough to recount the stories again about how everything went dark in Silicon Valley and how it got really bad and everything. Uh, and how the New York Times did an article on my brother, Paul, did an article on me and had a lot of hate stuff out there, had a lot of doxing, just weird stuff, crazy stuff that was happening. And listen, you look at it all now. Look at, look at everything out there now. Everyone is kind of up to speed on this stuff. But the relevancy right now is, you know, it's been a long time. I've been very educated. Like, I've never expected to get to be super popular on YouTube. I've never expected to get a lot of help, if you will. You know what I'm saying? And like someone else said, like, even if it's not shadow banning and stuff like that, like, I, who, I can't remember exactly who said this. I apologize. I wish I could remember. Um, you know, who they put on the front page, you know, who they choose to elevate, who they choose is, is massive. Like, if they put anyone on the front page, it, it would be huge. Or you've got some outfits on the on the right, some conservative outfits, if you will. I'm not going to get into it. So I don't want to make it personal and stuff like that. That spend buckets of money on advertising. That, oh, oh, big views are the most viewed on the on the conservative. Well, yeah. If I was spending 150,000, a million dollars, potential, whatever the number is, I have no idea. I'm not allowed to do anything. Let's just say it's six figures, maybe it's seven figures. I don't know per month. Uh, for people to watch my videos, I, I guess I get a lot of views too. You know what I mean? Like, like I manage, <clears throat> I do digital marketing media stuff for organizations. I'm doing it. I'm Doherty Auto Group here for Sarasota Subaru, Alfa Romeo Maserati of Sarasota. And you know, once you, if you put something up there, and you've got a business account. They'll tell you, oh, you, you know, if you spend this, you're gonna rent, you're gonna reach these amount of people. And so, you know, I mean, yeah, it's like the point being is never expected and paul made a great point i'll turn over to him in a second never expected to get uh uh you know a pro promoted if you will some people are worried about it if they're even getting a fair shake and look at the cap you know the, the sorry the the uh excuse me let the, look at the gemini ai stuff and you see what comes out of that and it's like it's very very devastating story because it really You've got the concrete evidence. You've got news organizations like Fox News and others that have done the searches. Where, and you've got the concrete evidence where you could not get factual information. You could not get a factual uh, or, or picture representation of, of historical figures. George Washington, you know, fill in the blank. And when you see that and you, you understand how bad it is, and then you look at Miami Tech and stuff like that, it's like, hey, you know, the, the vibe was, hey, doesn't matter. Just bring the money. Bring the money. Just bring the big names. We're tech. We're here. And you had all these woke ideas. And it was, you, know, you had, you know, this woke stuff, that woke stuff, this woke climate change and, and, and you know, uh, uh, DEI and ESG. It was all on full blast, you know, uh, and, and, and it was like, and, and in crypto, you know, with that hot, quick money, it was like, yeah, well, everyone can be a VC. Everyone's a crypto millionaire. It was craziness. But nobody, it was much like the border situation. Nobody was asking the questions, 
what are you bringing to Florida? No one was asking the questions, what politics are you bringing to Florida? What woke, bad politics are you bringing to Florida? Do you even care? Are you even asking any of the questions? Did, what about the, how about this? Why is there even politics in technology? Stuff? What does the, te does the technology even work? Does the business model even work? Is this a good investment? But it's even beyond that because now there's reports here. Buck Sexton was talking about some stuff, I believe in the Clay and Buck show. And maybe I also heard some other stuff, but and, and, and we'll get, I'll get to that in one second. Let's table that. There's a bunch of stuff here. I'm just trying to cover very fast. So I'm just hoping everyone's following me. One of the things that Paul said is the difference between when he, see the problem is, and I'm saying three things at once. These big corporations and tech oligarchs stuff, Disney, Bud Light, whatever. And I'm not, I'm not legend. I'm just using examples out there that, that have been in the news. Are used to kind of, by way of the government, you know, mostly, well, let me, let me revise and extend that. There's a Twitter file. So, you know, we'll talk about that. Maybe not get to all that today. But these companies have come out with policies, whatever it is, their community policy, their standards, their, hey, they're private corporations, John. Okay, well, you're, how private are you when you have this contact with the government, Twitter files and stuff like that? <clears throat> how private are you when the government's saying, when, when there's been some different things out there of don't tell the Hunter Biden story, that, that equates a question. And also when you have, you know, the, the, the protection uh, out there uh, with liability and stuff like that, are you a public square? There's all those different types of, of, of situations. But for a long time, they had such oversized market power, right, that they were able to kind of dictate where you couldn't go. If you want to do serious videos and, and, and be seen, the, the, you, you had to go to YouTube. Still the number one platform. Still the number two search engine out there right behind Google. Google's still the number one platform. But at least now with X, Rumble, others, you know, locals, there's other alternatives. There's other, you, LinkedIn to some degree, right? There's other alternatives that you can use where there isn't a total, where, there, where you, you have a place to be more conservative, where there's more, there's more, some would say more free speech alternatives out there. You made that point, Paul. Why don't you go ahead and step up and make that point now, and then I'll, I'll, I'll come out with some other information here in a second. Yeah, look, I mean, this is like Joe Rogan said this the other day, basically said to paraphrase him, if it weren't for Elon Musk, we'd all be screwed. But because of Elon Musk, because of Rumble, there is a new ecosystem. There is a different universe, almost like a multiverse, alternate universe type of situation. You can do that. And it's it's a wonderful thing just for diversity of thought. Right. You don't have to agree with people, but it, like at least they get to say what they think and give a different perspective. Whereas for years, I mean, as we both know, it was very hard to do that. And if you did do it, you would be perhaps demonetized or you wouldn't be promoted. I think the person you were saying about putting the stuff on the front of the uh, on the front page was Tim Pool. Yes, Tim Pool. Yes, exactly I, right. Who, of course, is, you know, good Tim for Cass. him. He's very successful via YouTube. But it does matter because you, you, if you, it matters because if the number of hits you get is the number of advertising dollars you make. And so if people can't get the advertising dollars, they can't do it full time. And if you want people, if you want to promote certain viewpoints and maybe not promote other viewpoints, well, then, you know, it's not really not really difficult to figure out how to do that. So let maybe me see. You have some people that are part time and other people going to be uh, are full time. Let me say this real quick, because I've got three things here in my brain that I want to make sure we put on the table and get some more comments from you. When you see, first of all, to, to show you, some might say how bad it is. When you've got people that are killing it or relatively on YouTube that are stepping up and still speaking out on this, people like you know, Phil DeFranco, Sexy Phil, uh, uh, Tim Cass, Tim Poole, Rogan, others, uh, Tucker, other. That shows you what we're dealing with, or, or at least some 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 indication of the of the of the level of issue that we're dealing with here. Okay, 
number one. Number two, when you have a situation like this Gemini AI and how bad that was, and even the response to it, I'm not going to, I can't prove, can't prove a negative, no conspiracy there. Do you really think, how many people think that, that conservatives in general were going to get a fair shake, let alone conservatives that were crushing it, that had the, the degrees and, 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 uh, uh, conservative, you know, Hispanics and, and, uh, you know, all the back in 2009, 2010, 2011 players, very different, very different zone there with the first term of Obama and stuff like that. I mean, very different vibe. Let me tell you, let me tell you as bad as it is now, holy smokes. I mean, in some ways it's gotten worse. In some ways it's gotten better. So it's kind of like a little bit of a mix. <clears throat> um, but, you know, it was much more easy in that time, I think, to be isolated, canceled, singled out, whatever. There's a lot more canceling now that has happened. Although now it's swinging back the other way. But it was a lot easier to cancel any one individual, you know, to do the whack-a-mole back, base, back then, to really pump up. And give the and again, you know, fake it till you make it. You, you, if if you know, YouTube was able to, and I'm not alleging anything, but like 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 the early movers, you know, if you got momentum early, you were able to keep it. You, you know, you have people that have kept momentum that have, been, have built big channels that I don't think are that great, honestly. And I'm not punking anyone. I'm not a hater, but I'm just saying, like, if you knock people off the block and you pump them down versus pump them up. And then it's, and in fact, my wife showed me the other day, she was trying to kind of thumbs up, uh, I'm not going to say what, where, whatever, uh, story, and you couldn't do it. Like you literally couldn't do it. And it's on a different platform. I mean, she was showing me that I wouldn't believe it if, unless I saw it. It was weird. It was super weird. There's some weird, and I'm not alleging anything. I don't know. Maybe, I, maybe it was, maybe it was a, a glitch. Maybe I mistook it. Maybe I didn't, I don't know. But I'm saying like, do you think after seeing, that's the point. After seeing the, the whole Gemini AI thing, <clears throat> how many people, seriously, I don't care if you vote for Biden, in your heart of hearts, do you, how many people think that conservatives can get a fair shake or, or, or be elevated or promoted in any significant way on these platforms or on that platform? I mean, that's just a question. I mean, just being honest. And if if you think that they can or you have, or you, if you have a question if they can, how about that? How about that? If you question if they can, doesn't that say everything? And in fact, Buck Sexton was saying he was talking or someone, I don't know, Rogan or so I don't know. I heard this thing. I, I think no, 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 excuse me, excuse me. It was the Blaze. It was it was Beck and Stu, I think. They were talking on the Blaze. That they yeah, they talk to people over there, they know people. Again, if you have bigger channels, if you're doing it, you know, there's some kind of interest or sometimes if you have a huge channel, sometimes there's some level of communication. I don't know. Obviously, Beck is a is a you know, all these people have big money and connections and stuff. I have no idea. But anyway, the idea was maybe it was a reporting or something, or someone reported or some some reaction to that. But the, the, the gist of it was this that the there's a culture of fear over there. Like it's weird like it's super weird first of all they're saying like it's so big it's so monolith nobody's in charge basically nobody knows who's in charge of any of these projects um to some degree uh there's a culture of fear they talk about like if you're if you're uh um they were saying like i guess there was this term of gray googlers or something like that you know people that were over 40 over 40 now the now they're stressing out of it. I mean, like like that's like that's a crazy thing. The over forty, like, dude, forty's young. Are, are you kidding me? Especially we're supposed like there's people <clears throat> there's people that maybe live in the they're talking about humans living 120, 150. Who knows? They're working all kinds of who knows, right? And and that basically like they didn't like that term, like the, the, all the PC stuff you could imagine. Like oh, we can't do this, can't do this. And that the age, the only thing that connects everybody is this like powerful HR that's like super liberal. And it's basically out of control. And of course, like this whole thing that happened with um, Gemini AI, very foreseeable. And again, garbage in equals garbage out. And it's like this thing has gone out of control. Okay. So, you know, this is what you're, when you're, my, so then we go back to Miami Tech. Miami Tech, one of the biggest names here. This is what you're inviting into Miami, bro. 
with ESG, with DEI, with all this type of stuff and climate change and everything like that. And in, in, in when you're trying to run for the Republican presidency, dude, and the state has gone red and you've got Ronnie D here, Governor D, the greatest uh, 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 governor in, in, in at least in the modern history of Florida, in my recollection, stuff like that. It doesn't make sense. And so basically what they're saying is it's unmanageable. And now there's pressure on Sundar Pichai, the uh, CEO, and people have talked about maybe we need antitrust. There's a lot of questions here, Paul. There's a lot I had to put on the table here. I want to get your reactions here. we got about four minutes left. Yeah, there are a lot of questions. I mean, look, it, it's... Oh, I'll, I'll say this. Oh, sorry, sorry. One, last thing. And I don't know if they listen to our show or not. I mean, a lot of people listen to A lot of people follow you on, on X, no doubt about it. But finally, the, and I've said this, Time and time and time again. And finally, Buck Sexton said it on the Buck Sexton, you know, take, took over for Limbaugh, Buck, and, and Clay Travis, said that basically, like, just, uh, look, the Republicans have to stand up to this. This is BS. This is, you know, with and and we're tired of the lip service. We're trying to, let me tell you something. Like, like, it's all a dog and pony show. It's ridiculous. They take the money, too, that you've got to do this, or, the, or, or conservatives will never have a voice. And this is, people, it comes back to the same thing. This is a super important election. And this issue of taking the wokeness out of tech and VC is critically important, particularly when it comes to free speech and Elon and everything like that. I'll, last thing I want to say on that. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, look, I mean, it's because of the power of tech and because, as you said, because of the dominance of, of search engines like Google, uh, I mean, this is the way a lot of people interact with the world. So if you control that, I mean, you control how they see things. That is why Gemini, uh, Google, Gemini AI, and things like it are so important. That's why there does need to be a discussion and kind of a a a, uh, a, a contest over how it's going to be. This reminds me of the old um, the old um, struggles or battles, but uh, political battles or, or curriculum battles used to play, take place in the eighties and nineties in colleges about what books are you going to read, literary canon. I, I took classes about this, like, okay, are we going to read a bunch of, are we going to read Shakespeare and so on and so forth, or are we going to read Toni Morrison and da, 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 da. And it's a similar thing. What, what you're introduced to and, and the, the lens that you're looking through can, can influence the way that you perceive things. And there's, there's arguments for both sides, but I think everybody agrees or sh hopefully will agree that Gemini AI and things like it need to be historically accurate. I just heard something the other day about how people were supposedly complaining about this new successful uh, television program, Shogun, about Japan. I mean, Japan was what it was in the 1600s. You can't really alter that. So that's where it has to start. Start with historical accuracy and then work from there. No, absolutely. And listen, here's the thing. This, this is the distinction that's important. I think you're at a time now, and Paul said it and I've said it and others, where Elon and X and Rumble and local, there's, there's other platforms where if these bigger platforms that are left-leaning or have people think of left-leaning or whatever, don't get their act together, they're going to lose a lot of market share. Because there's, it's almost like when Fox News launched, it immediately became, very quickly became number one because the, half the country now had somewhere to go instead of the other three, four, five, none of the places. You know, in, in other words, if 90% of media is liberal and now you start a conservative channel, you got a lot of opportunity, right? So I think that the market can react right now. And the companies that are at risk most are those that are supposed to be eh, neutral, at least middle of the road, whatever, or non-political, like Disney, Bud Light, other stuff like that. And when you when you basically are going, particularly when you go against your consumers, like all oh, the bratty Fridays, stuff like that, and punking them out and trying to completely do a 180 on the brand, it absolutely doesn't work. I know a lot of people that aren't going to Disney right now and stuff, and and, and you know it's spring break here in Florida, and a lot of people would would do that. So so much to talk about as usual. We never get to all of it. There's no doubt about it. We definitely appreciate it, Paul. We appreciate you being on the show. I would definitely appreciate uh, the customers here at Alfa Romeo Maserati of Sarasota being on the show. 
And we hope everyone has a great week out there. Lots to happen right here, but I think there's a lot to be optimistic about. And that's why you listen to the John D. Villarreal Radio Show here on News Talk 1040. Hope everyone has a wonderful, wonderful week. We want to thank everyone there, the team at News Talk 1040. For Paul and everyone here at Alfred Mayor Monterey, Sarasota, I'm John D. Villarreal. Have a wonderful week. Stay blessed. You're listening to John D. Villarreal Radio Show on News Talk 1040, live on LinkedIn, Facebook, YouTube, and X. See you next week. Stay blessed. Stay tuned. Next week, we'll see you then.